Do you ever fantasize about being killed? Never. Do you ever wonder about all the different ways of dying, you know, violently? I wonder, like, what would be the most horrible way to die? I try not to think about dying too much. Hi, I'm Johnny. This is Johnny Likes, the show where I talk about movies that I like. Today, I'm talking about one of my favorite zombie movies of all time. Today, Johnny likes Return of the Living Dead. You tell him, Johnny. You tell the world. So Freddy is a typical young guy. And it's his first day on the job at Unita Medical Supplies. He's being shown the ropes by Frank, who is the senior employee and has been working there for years. While Frank's showing Freddy around, they accidentally gas themselves with Trioxin-245, the deadly chemical that was responsible for the events in Night of the Living Dead. The Trioxin makes its way through the ventilation and gives a dose to a cadaver among other things, and soon enough it works its magic. Meanwhile, Freddy's friends are hanging around in a nearby abandoned cemetery, as teens will do, waiting for Freddy to get off work. Things spiral out of control, and Frank calls up Bert, who is the owner of Unita Medical Supplies. Bert comes down, sees the situation, and he gets his best bud Ernie involved, who's uh, the local mortician. That's right, Bert and Ernie. From there, it's all mayhem. Spoiler warning for this one, I do mention the ending, and I talk about some kind of important scenes. So Dan O'Bannon is probably best known as the writer of Alien. But he also happened to direct and write the screenplay for this little gem. He's also been involved in some pretty big movies in the sci-fi and horror genre. He worked on Total Recall, on Life Force, he worked on Heavy Metal... And there's a bunch of other ones. But the film's story is credited to John A. Russo, Rudy Ricci, and Russell Striner. And they all worked with George Romero on Night of the Living Dead. So a little side note here. As I understand it, after Night of the Living Dead, John A. Russo retained the rights to the Living Dead moniker. And that's why Romero's films were always of the dead and not of the living dead. And it's also why we have two kind of parallel series with a common origin film. Hey, the more you know. So I watched this movie once or twice in my teen and tween years. And the main thing that stuck out in my hormone-riddled adolescent brain was Naked Girl in Cemetery! Now, don't get me wrong. That's still a personal highlight and a great scene. But now that I'm a little bit older, I appreciate the rest of the film as well. So this is an early example of meta-horror. We get a warning at the beginning saying the all the names are real, all the corporations are real, these are real events, that sort of thing. When Frank's showing Freddy the ropes, he, he tells him that Night of the Living Dead, all the stuff in that actually happened. Did you see that movie, Night of the Living Dead? Yeah, 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 that's the one where the corpses start eating the people, right? Sure. What, what about it? Did you know that movie was based on a true case? It might not have happened quite like it did in the movie, but it's all based on real stuff. Which I can only assume isn't true, but part of me is like, well, what if? It would be a great way to do a psyop. You make a movie that's so over the top that no one would believe that any of this stuff actually happened. It'd be a great way to cover that stuff up. It's probably not based on true events, though. Probably. So I love the tone of this movie. It's got this attitude about it that's kind of hard to describe. It's not quite nihilistic, but it's not all that positive either. Maybe pessimistic is the word I'm going for here. It's got this wicked dark sense of humor to it, but it also keeps the horror aspect up front and center. It's definitely a horror movie first and a comedy second. I was a kid, I didn't even get that there was like a comedy aspect to it. But now that I'm older and a little bit more jaded, I totally get it. There's a few standout moments in this movie that I'd like to talk about that help to establish the lore of the world in kind of clever ways. 
First is the yellow guy, the cadaver, who gets dosed with the trioxin. When they try to kill it with a pickaxe and it doesn't work, and this is their response. I thought you said if we destroyed the brain, it'd die. It worked in the movie! Well, it ain't working now, Frank. You mean the movie line? I like that moment for a couple of reasons. First, it's uh, it's got that dark sense of humor that I was talking about, and that kind of meta aspect. It also establishes that th- these zombies don't follow the same rules as the Romero films. These zombies will remain animated if you kill the brain. Another classic moment is when the zombies kill the first set of paramedics, and the ambulance radio goes off. Rescue 7, come in. This is dispatch. Do you copy over? Come in, dispatch. Send more paramedics. I like this for basically the same reasons as the first moment. It uh, further establishes the lore. Uh, these ones have are not quite mindless ghouls like they were in Night of the Living Dead or Dawn of the Dead. They have a little bit of cognitive ability. And also, yeah, like, funny. The last one I'm going to mention is the half-woman zombie on the stretcher. This is a wonderful little bit of special effects, even if the mouth doesn't match up with the words and you can tell that the movement is pretty limited. It's still quite effective. I can feel myself rot. Eating brains. How does that make you feel? It makes the pain... Go away. And this was important because it explains why the zombies crave brains and not just flesh like they did in other movies. It gives them a motive, which is something that was never present in previous lore. All this sort of stuff is done without a huge exposition dump, and there's no character from the first film or from the first outbreak coming to tell you what the rules of the world are or anything like that. We learn the rules of this world as the characters do. And that's just good storytelling. The performances in this film were hit and miss. Freddy's friends in the graveyard were the most wild card in terms of acting. They seem fairly unrealistic and stereotypical, but the vibes they give off are at least consistent with each other. Damn it! It's a rain! It's like acid rain! Oh, it's not a rain! It's not a rain! We ain't got no talk! We only get the barest hint of depth to them. And that's all fine and good. I was coming to this movie expecting the bare minimum in terms of performances. And besides, the teens were mostly there just to pump up the body count. And I guess to add some TNA. It was Freddy, Frank, Bert, and Ernie who were the meat of the performances for this film. We see the events unfold mostly through their eyes. And they were all pretty solid and meshed well with each other. They had good chemistry. And the only note I would kind of have is to have Frank moan a lot less. So I might have dialed that down just a tad. I quite like the special effects in this film. The chopped up zombie wriggling around. The half dog. What's wrong with me? The tar looking zombie in the basement. And of course, the half woman on the stretcher. Those were all pretty great. The other zombies and kind of gore and death scenes were also very well done for the most part. I also like how the special effects never really seemed to overshadow the story, even though they were quite prominent and there were some kind of, like, glory shots. The score and soundtrack in this was peak 80s cheese. It sounds campy and cheesy now, and I'm sure it sounded campy and cheesy when it first came out. But it has a certain charm to it, if you're into that sort of thing. And I am. I also love that Freddy was rocking a Visage shirt, or Visage. I don't know how you say that band's name, but you'll you'll see. Just read the word. Read the word. You tell me how it's said in the comments. 
They were like a new wave synth pop band, by the way. So zombie films are rarely heavy on plot. They're more about how people react in dire situations and watching people and zombies die in horrific and exotic ways. This one is no different. A couple of guys bring the dead back to life with an insatiable hunger for human brains. Terror ensues, and we watch the consequences unfold. The difference in this one was the solution to the problem, which was to nuke the whole town. Spectacular results, sir. Very close to optimal placement. That's that kind of semi-nihilistic tone I was talking about. We spend like 90 minutes getting to know these characters and start to wonder how they're going to make it out of this one. And then we find out they're all going to die. It's a fitting ending to this film and it felt right to me. It's much better than like the army comes in and saves the day or they somehow find a miracle cure or something like that. I don't think zombie films should generally have a happy ending as a rule. And I think it definitely shouldn't be a simple solution, even though nuking the town is pretty simple. So to summarize, we have an early meta-horror with wonderful special effects, some decent performances, a wicked dark sense of humor, a cool soundtrack, and an underlying feel of dread to everything. And I think this one has aged especially well, and I'm going to give it a 4.25 out of 5. Recommendations. If you like this, some more 80s classic horror would be Reanimator. That one has the bringing back the dead motif, and it's just an excellent film overall. You've got Parents. That's kind of an underrated and overlooked film, which I found to be quite creepy. And Night of the Demons. It's another one with Linnea Quigley in it, and it's also pretty overlooked. So what's your guys' favorite zombie film? Do you guys like the Romero zombie films or the Return of the Living Dead zombie films better? As a series, I guess. You can answer these questions for me in the comments. And if you could do me one more thing and like and subscribe, it's quick, free, and relatively painless. Plus, it really helps me out. Thanks for watching me talk about movies for a little while, and you can tune in next time to see what else Johnny likes. One thing. <laughs> And one thing only that can leave this world with suffering. What, Freddy? What? Live brain! <laughs>